Hey everyone, welcome back to Land Investing Online, where we teach students how to profitably buy and sell vacant land. This is the simplest, least competitive, and most profitable section of real estate. For more information, please visit landinvestingonline.com to join our free Discord with tons of successful investors. Come learn from the best. I'm Daniel Apke, joined by my brother and partner, Ron Apke. Hey, Ron. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Let's get uh, right into it. Before we start, let's go over one of our questions. How much time do you spend to price and send your mail? I'll step back out of this one because I don't actually do the pricing. I do the sales side of things. Ron does the data and all the pricing. So Ron, how much time do you spend to price and send your mail? Yeah, that's a really good question. People kind of, I think a lot of newer people don't know their results yet, so they don't know what works best. Um, me personally for about 2000 mailers will take maybe two, two and a half hours. Um, I think obviously at first it's going to take you longer before you find out what works best and it matters how detailed you want to get with your pricing. Um, but I found that what I'm doing right now, uh, gets us the most efficient results. Maybe if I took another three hours, I could get maybe more results over a long period of time. Um, but what I'm doing right now seems to be the most efficient. Um, I urge new members to kind of put a timeline on how long they want to put towards uh, pricing and then just cut themselves off. Um, say do five, five hours or so for your first uh, 2000 mailers or something like that. Um, I think is more than enough time and then cut yourself off and get that mail out. Cause that's what at the end of the day is going to get you deals. Yeah. And you got to have that cut off, right? Cause you can go down a serious, serious rabbit hole with pricing. I mean, you're never going to be perfect. Um, there's always going to be flaws in your pricing and you can go down a rabbit hole. So it's just about knowing, you know, that efficiency, um, of how much you actually need to do to get the most results with the least amount of time. And for us and Ron, that's about three hours. I wouldn't spend too much, spend five hours if it's your first mailer on it. Um, and then just, yeah, set a timer and cut yourself off. Yeah, I, I think that's perfect, Dan. Awesome. Well, let's get into the show then. Today, we're talking about deal uh, partners with the land investing business. Do you need a partner? Um, so if this is something you've considered or you want to get in, um, but you don't know where to start or how to start or if you need a partner or not, um, or there's even people that ask me who already are in this business and they're successfully doing it by themselves, but they might be having trouble getting to the next level. And they're asking, you know, about partners or potential partners um, and people they'd work together with. So do you need a funding partner? I think the first question you need to ask yourself. Funding partner when, or just a business partner? Or, you mean I'm sorry, it? not funding partner. Do you need a partner? Uh, funding partner is a completely different topic we'll get into later, but do you need a business partner? And the first question you need to ask is, is there someone that comes to mind that's hardworking and will be consistent? And someone who just comes to mind when you think of who can I partner with? That is there someone comes to mind? Because if there's not, you don't want to just pick someone desperately, right? So if you have someone specifically who, um, who comes to mind, I would definitely consider it. And we'll get into the reasons why. But for me, when I learned about this business model, I knew my brother Ron at the time. He was a basketball coach. And I knew he was looking for extra money on the side, um, just extra income source. So I had someone that came to my mind when, when looking at this business model, I didn't want to get into it by myself at the time. Cause I had a lot of other businesses and things going on. I needed a partner um, for me, but Ron um, was a basketball coach and I thought he fit that. So uh, what, what do you have to say about that, Ron? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you don't want to force a partner that might not be, it's easy at the start. You guys are excited, um, but there's obviously going to be rough times where maybe you guys, there's a decision that needs to be made. You got to be able to make a decision, if, even if you guys disagree, um, coming to a solution. Uh, so like Daniel said, like really, you want your goals to align with your partner, um, not necessarily your skill sets. That's a different thing that we'll talk about, uh, but your goals aligning, I think are really important, whether it's, I want to make half a million dollars this year, profit half a million dollars with this business. Well, that's not going to, it doesn't mean you can go out every single night of the week and watch every single game at night. Like if you have a nine to five job, you're going to have to put in some extra hours after your job, obviously. Um, so you, you don't want to feel like you're doing all the work. Um, I think that's one thing with a lot of partnerships where they struggle is one person feels like they're doing all the work. Um, the other thing is 
So I think pros and cons are a good thing to look at, Dan, with partnerships. Uh, everyone loves to say, I got to split the money. I, I got to I gotta split the profit because I have a partner. Um, but you don't really, really look at what that partner can bring. Um, just like an employee, like when, when we're hiring employees, we don't think about we're paying them $80,000. We're going to lose $80,000. We're br- saying they can bring us half a million dollars of value. We're going to make an extra blank this year or something like that because of this employee. So I think that's how looking at partnerships is. Um, What do you kind of see uh, that that's a con I think I hear Dan, which isn't a real con splitting money. Um, I think the main con is if you don't fit that partner, what do you kind of think the pros are? I think the main pros are everyone has a personality type and a skill set. And I think the main thing is finding someone uh, that doesn't necessarily align with your same skill set. So and, and with that being said, too, there's some other reasons why I would consider a partner. Um, actually, that most people might relate to if you don't have a ton of money to dump in this business and you have someone who's looking for a new business with uh, a lot of extra cash sitting around that they don't know what to do with, that can be the biggest thing because money in this business um, can get you a far way if you can keep. We, we talk a lot about consistency. And if you can keep sending mail consistently, which costs money. Um, and, and you can have a partner that can help you with that. I think that would be huge. But other skill sets we look for, like there's, there's multiple sides of this business, but one of the main ones is the data side. So like the pricing and stuff, and then the sales side. So if you are uh, a data type of person and doing the pricing, I'd find someone with the sales and vice versa. And it doesn't necessarily mean you can't have two sales guys working there. I, I don't believe in that at all. I think you can still make that work. I just think if you guys can complement each other's skill sets, that would work best. And then we get into the whole thing, um, you know, synergy. If you guys complement each other's skill sets, you work well together, you have the same goals. I truly believe this is a business model because there's so many different sides to it that uh, has crazy amounts of synergy potential. You know, one plus one equaling like five instead of two. Um, you just can multiply in so many different ways. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. I think, uh, really guys, like, I, I don't want you to overthink this process. Like, yes, it's a huge decision. Um, but we keep saying the same thing as far as making sure your goals align, making sure your work, work ethic aligns. Um, Daniel and I are different people in the way we work, but our goals as a business, as a company align, and we both can trust each other with our roles. When you can't trust someone to do their job, um, that's because when issues are going to come up and that's when it's going to cost money because you guys are going to separate and then you're going to deal with all that. Um, find someone who's going to hustle with you and wants to grow something. I think that's the main thing. And if you're a person who can self-motivate and do it, uh, there we're not pushing you guys towards a partner. There are so many people who do this successfully by themselves and make a million plus a year pretty easily uh, right. once they get their systems down and everything. Um that's, that's really the main thing. Like really think about if you need a partner. So let's say you're the first couple of months, the first couple of months, like it takes the mail some time to hit. Uh, if you have a partner, you can push through that. It's a little easier. Like we got this, we're going to do this. Um, without a partner, like you got to be able to motivate yourself to keep sending that mail and being consistent. Even when uh, maybe you haven't gotten your first deal because the mail hasn't completely hit yet. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a really good point. And I, I I just had something come to mind as well. I actually had a guy who came to me and he said, uh, I think it was last week, um, and he asked me, his goal to, is a million dollars of profit. And he asked me how to get there. How can he get there? And he actually had a partner in mind that he was considering. And I knew that. And I, I pretty much told him if they can come up with something is to get that partner. And because they both have similar goals. So that was my main advice to him is, is actually partner with someone to double their business, because I think it can get you such a far way. And I know he was more of a data person. And um, I think it was actually his brother was more of a salesperson and they aligned in their family and they can trust each other. But obviously, like with anything, you got to be careful with business relationships. They can get really messy. I'm sure everyone that's listening has heard that before. So you got to be careful. Um, but that being said, you can always get out of them, right? Mm-hmm. For this, it's not like we're building um, a service where 
we have a bunch of equipment and whatnot. We can always get out of them if we need to. So the worst case scenario is you guys separate split ways. You start your own company and send mail out of that company. It's not like once you have the skills in this, in this business, you can really take them anywhere. It's not like you have a bunch of equipment sitting in a warehouse and a big asset you need to split across. You guys can change the name of your company and just start sending mail yourself. So you're not, you're never stuck in this business, I'd say. And I think it's one, one person's going to find this business. It's not going to be like both people on this in the same week, like are going to search land flipping or something like that. It's not a normal streamlined business at this point in time. Um, so you want someone that understands and believes in the business as well. I think that's important. Um, like you're going to, it's, it sounds crazy at first, like, man, I can buy this P I can buy land for $50,000 and sell it for a hundred thousand dollars. Um, you want to partner up? Like, um, it, it, you gotta, you gotta sell them on the business a little bit and they have to believe in it. Make sure that you kind of align on that as well. Um, where it doesn't seem too crazy of a business as real as we know it is. And you believe it is, um, make sure someone also kind of buys into the business. Yeah. And I have seen both sides of the business. I've seen them work very, very well for people. And I've also seen people have to split, um, split in the land business. And usually it's just because their goals don't align, but ultimately I definitely think it's a good idea. If you're just getting started and no one comes to mind, don't worry about it. Jump in yourself. You can find a partner that aligns with you down the road who's already been in land as well that complements your skill sets. We, ha we have a couple of guys we're in an accountability group with who I just found out they partner together. They both really, really complement their skills uh, very well. And they both been doing land over a year and they just like started partnering now. So you can always do it down the road. The main idea is get started. Don't let anything hold you back. Stay consistent. But yeah, it's, it's a good idea if, if the right situation fits you. I don't think I have anything else, Dan. I think that kind of answers it. Like, it, it's an important decision. Don't get me wrong. And don't force the decision either way. Like, really sit down and think about what's best for you and uh, your business and think about the good times and the bad times and how it's going to work with that potential person. Um, but I think we kind of covered that all. Yeah. Well, everyone, thanks for joining. Please visit landinvestingonline.com to join our free discord where Ron and I are involved and lots of other successful investors. It's free. Might as well give it a shot and we'll see you guys on the other side. Thanks guys.